What are stormwater pollutants? Stormwater is water from rainfall and melted snow that drains off Pennsylvania's rural and urban landscapes. It's a lot of water since around 43 inches of precipitation fall on the state every year. Stormwater harms local creeks, rivers, and lakes in two major ways. It causes physical damage like flooding, erosion, and loss of fish habitat. And it causes water pollution because stormwater often contains harmful material like the brown sediment in this image where a muddy stream is mixing with the relatively clear water of the Susquehanna River. There are many stormwater pollutants, but here we'll group them into five broad categories. Solid waste or trash, eroded soil or sediment, nutrient-rich materials, which are mostly fertilizers, pathogens, which are bacteria and viruses, and toxic materials. Let's take a look at each of these. The first one is solid waste. It refers to discarded items that should have been disposed of in a landfill or incinerated, but instead are uncontained in the environment, where they can harm wildlife and clog stormwater systems. Sources of trash include careless and intentional littering, historic dumping before the days of widespread trash collection, and loose trash that's set outside on windy days. Solutions include keeping solid waste contained and removing it from local waterways during events like stream cleanups. The next category is eroded soil. Erosion happens when stormwater washes bare soil into streams. This soil can smother stream habitat, alter stream flow, and, as we'll get to in a second, over-enrich waterways with nutrients. Sources are many, and they include poorly managed lawns, gardens, and farmlands, slumping stream banks and messy construction sites, runoff from poorly maintained dirt and gravel roads, and improper logging practices. The key to preventing soil erosion is slowing down stormwater where it falls because slow moving water contains less erosive energy. Achieving this is often as simple as covering bare soil with garden mulches or crop residues. The next category is nutrient rich materials. Nutrient rich materials include the elements phosphorus and nitrogen from fertilizers which feed aquatic plants and algae including toxic algae blooms that can turn a lake an unhealthy shade of green and pose a risk to any unsuspecting dog or child that might happen to wade in. Nutrient-rich materials also reduce oxygen levels in streams, which can harm fish and other aquatic life. Common nutrient sources include excess fertilizers on lawns and croplands, and eroded soil because nutrients, especially phosphorus, are often attached to sediment particles, so they get washed away in the dirt. Solutions involve applying nutrients at the right time in the right amounts and never near high risk spots like waterways, sinkholes, and wells. The next category is pathogens. Pathogens include bacteria and viruses like the E. coli bacteria in this enlarged image, which can make people sick. Bacteria are usually the reason why swimming advisories are posted at public beaches. Pathogens usually come from animal sources, including improperly disposed pet waste and livestock manures. But they can also come from failing septic systems, including septic tanks that haven't been pumped and failing septic drain fields. Solutions include cleaning up after pets, managing manures properly, and pumping septic tanks before they get too filled. The final category of stormwater pollutants are toxic materials. These compounds come from a mix of sources. But common examples include improperly applied pesticides around the home and farm, excess winter salt applications, and leaking gas, oil, and antifreeze from cars and trucks. Like with the other pollutants, the solutions to keeping toxic materials out of stormwater are mostly common sense. They include using these products sparingly, following all label directions, storing them safely to avoid leaks and spills, and disposing of them properly.